straight out of a car. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Straight Out of a Comic Book. I am your host, the Anomaly Will Farrow. Um, this is a very special edition of Straight Out of a Comic Book. It is a kayfabe edition. Now, if you are a fan of myself or Cleo Thomas, you know we are fans of wrestling. We had a, 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 a kayfabe podcast, which is still going. Just, you know, right now, with everything happening with the pandemic and everything like that, a lot of our stuff has been kind of taken away from this pride and joy. But... Wrestling still always comes up as a conversation. So I thought it best that we go on something not topical, but a little bit evergreen. And that brought out even the tech guy, Kadeem, to want to talk about this. And of course, if you don't know already, we're talking about wrestling's Mount Rushmore. Mm. Now... I'm expanding it. Fuck four. We going five. We bet we building out an extra space on the mountain top five, for top five, five of them. Now the first thing I do I do want to know is um uh, are we are like I wanna give I wanna give um uh, the layout and I wanna make sure that we're we're straight on that. Are we sticking with just WWE or is this the entire like wrestling industry? I think it's a it's a personal decision. But if we're talking wrestling, then yeah, it's it's WWE, it's WCW, it's ECW, it's ICM, it's it's New Japan, it's uh, ROH, it's Ring of Honor. It's a whole bunch of other shit. Ring of Honor. So, so, so just throw out your favorite wrestler, and it has to fill out your five. You can't have six. Can only be five. Okay. Five. Okay. All right. Um, I I, I can already imagine that. There's two that's already filled, and I feel like it's really only three that we got to fill up because if Stone Cold and The Rock is not on this Mount Rushmore, then what are we doing? Then what are we talking about here? What are we talking? What are we really talking yeah. about then? I, I mean, y'all, y'all not wrong. I, I mean, I wish I can try to fight that thing. It's a foot. It is what it is. It the can't. Rock and so yeah, The Rock and Stone Cold literally. I, I mean, you can get into the whole technician or you know tactical wrestling versus the other type of wrestling you know what i mean like the technicians and all that stuff obviously they weren't the most tactical wrestlers around they just weren't but but, that, uh, no, well, a, but actually stone cold was, stone cold a was. very the ring, very he was wrestler. was known as what the ringleader the ring master yeah 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 ring master. No, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, ring master. And, so, and, I mean, and, and the rock was very proficient in moves like he was probably one of the best in ring performers not no. technician but performers that's what they be. Yeah, if you take, if you pull that out and just go impact and everything else, you can't leave them out. You just can't yeah. do it. They're they're in there. That's, so those are like the only two rivals I've ever seen elevate one another. Like these were two dudes who remember like Stone Cold was not supposed to make it. Like Eric Bischoff said himself, you're just a, a guy in white and black trunk in black trunks. How can I sell that? The yeah. Rock. When he came out as Rocky Maivia, they hated it. It was two guys who had pretty much got designed to fail. Yeah. Well, and now we back. Yeah, and when these two cross paths, boom, 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 to where both of their really like their last matches capped at WrestleMania. Yeah. In uh Seattle. WrestleMania twenty three. Or twenty four. I think it was twenty. I was just talking about it this morning on my Instagram live. Someone asked me like who my favorite wrestlers were, and I brought up uh, Austin and Stone Cold, and I said, but for very diff- very different reasons in my opinion. When I go back and watch the network, and I watch every time Rock's music hits, and that microphone is in his hand, he has complete control of that moment. They're hanging on to everything he's saying, waiting to finish his buzzwords, waiting to finish his buzz lines. There, they were just, and we were just so sold on everything that he did. So Rock is that, is that, that's on my Mount Rushmore. He's, he's in my number one position for that reason. But then Stone Cold shares that number one position to me because of with him, once that glass breaks, you know, mayhem is just ensuing. Yes. Now we don't, and I I don't know when it really like you know. Of course we know the the was it King of the Ring? Yes. Where he's the Austin awesome three sixteen thing. Yeah, obviously I just said I just whooped your ass. Yes. Uh, he beat. He beat uh, the uh, Jake the Snake. Jake the Snake. Jake the Snake. Jake the Snake. 
Yep. Austin 316 says, I just whipped your whoop ass. Your Iconic ass. moment, classic moment, just spit it out and it became everything. I don't know, yeah. I, I literally just bought two Austin 316 shirts from the WWE website last week. I got one still in the packaging. Um, for for Austin though, it's it's when that glass breaks, you know mayhem is ensuing. And you look forward to seeing him run down to that ring, stomp a mud hole in somebody, throw the beers up, middle fingers, stunner like that's all you really need to see from austin we didn't yeah. really need promos from austin we really didn't i didn't but need to I see him in the ring with a microphone i just kind of wanted to see him backstage wilding and but he became the top guy of backstage wilding mm-hmm. i will say the beer more beer tequila oh, and, all yeah. crazy, crazy and all promo. those what and all those what 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 what, what? what? <laughs> what? That put him to another level as well. See, that's yeah, the thing. I'm, I'm thinking even before the what era of himself. But when yeah, that right. what stuff took off, bro, it's still such a popular thing that we do. Well, obviously, we're not in arenas right now, but like, it's still the thing. It yeah, still yeah. has to happen. Austin 316 is still the, the most sold shirt in WWE history, and it's still being sold today. Yep. Two so it's like, yo. Like, yeah, when you, you just go for impact, impact and impact alone, it's you can't leave these two. Can't, they, leave those they can't leave them out. Now, when he gets so, any further than this, so oh, I man. would say though, I would say who who could be a nomination for the third slot? Like who would you who would you nominate to go? Okay, who, this is who I think could fill it and why. At look, as you can see, there it is. <laughs> it's still the best. It's still pristine. Bro, we do this. We do this shit, Will. Yes, indeed. What was the question? I said Who's so three? who? I said who would you nominate? But to go in the third slot of this Mount Rushmore. Janine, I'm going to let you go first, bro. Oh, man. Uh, as much as I love Shawn Michaels, as, lo- as much as I love him as one of the best pe- best performers in that ring, the showstopper, Mr. WrestleMania, he held those names up there for a reason. I got I to gotta go with Hunter, man. I'm going with Talk Hunter. Talk about it. I'm going with Talk Hunter. Talk about it, Kadeem. I'm going with Hunter. I have to go with Hunter. I love. There's so. I mean, there's a lot of them. Of course, you can go. Even you can even go Taker. I'd get if you even go Taker for third. I'm gonna go Hunter, the cerebral assassin, the 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 everything that the the blending of reality to actually wrestling and the way he did it. And actually, how amazing his matches were in building storylines and plots, and obviously this being—I mean, they call, they call him the game for a reason because he bodied the game of wrestling more than anyone we have seen when it comes to. I, I mean, he, of course, the cheat code of Stephanie McMahon, but we gonna we gonna push that to the side. We're gonna push the merits of Stephanie McMahon to the side. Um, Hold on, because that, there's something to that. We're gonna, and I'm gonna get to that too. Okay, I'm gonna right, but obviously. Too. Of course, but obviously his understanding of watching. I mean, of course, I feel like he was just a student of the game. He was a student. You know what I mean? He watched everyone else and what they did and the mistakes they made and and capitalized off of it. The whole click situation. Like we always hear stories about the click, and Hunter was really wasn't really with the whole drugs and alcohol and all that stuff. Like he never was with it. Was he around those guys? Sure. In order to, in order to pick up the game. In order to understand how to how to how the business works, but other than that, he he wasn't a like he wasn't about that life like that. Hunter really wasn't. So I I gotta put Hunter up there. I got he's, he's third. I could oh, go go ahead, Cleo. bro. And I I'm I'm on the same train as my brother with this. Hunter is for sure in my Mount Rushmore because everything that you just broke down, life imitating art or art imitating life, however you put it, yeah, is that. He called himself the game for a reason. He became this business. He became the company that he worked for. Yes, we can include the Stephanie move as a part of the game. You can include that. He became the top guy amongst heavy hitters like Taker, like Rock, like Stone Cold. Yes, and he is a student of not only Shawn Michaels, but uh, uh, Kevin Nash and... uh, 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 Scott Hall. Um, he he comes from that tree, but he just had these other tools, bro. Like his mind, it's his brain. The cerebral assassin thing is real. He is a calculate. That's crazy because it's his character. Him in that ring, he's calculated. Him with that sledgehammer, he's calculated. But in real life, 
Hunter really might be that guy. And I just want to want to want to uh, highlight the Rock versus Triple H ladder match that took place at SummerSlam in 1998. I did not watch that match until about two years ago. It that for sure solidified Hunter as one of my favorites. If you've never seen that match, ladies and gentlemen, it's on YouTube. But if you have the if you have the, the network, please go support the WWE. Go watch The Rock versus Triple H. It was a ladder match for the, I believe the Intercontinental title. It was at SummerSlam in 1998. It's one hell of a match. These two beat the living shit out of each other. Go watch it. Go ahead, Will. Yes, indeed. I I I was not expecting this to be a three-way agreement. <laughs> I wasn't either. Looking at me crazy when I say Triple H, man. But yeah, like y'all said, uh, just a, this is a three-way agreement, and he was cerebral and everything. Like, and even if you take, let's take the Stephanie thing out. Let's take that out. Let's take out any of that. First, like you said, he was in the click. He broke kayfabe during a time where kayfabe was not allowed to be broken. Like, you were supposed to live your character. And so when the click, which was Kevin Nash, Scott Hall, and Shawn Michaels, were all the uh, Kevin Nash and Scott Hall were getting ready to go to WCW, they all broke kayfabe at a show in Madison Square Garden. So, of course, at the time, Shawn Michaels was big, so Vince couldn't touch Shawn Michaels. But you're not supposed to be having the good guy and the bad guy interacting with one another. So who got the short end of the stick? Hunter. Triple Hunter. H. Very Hunter very got blackballed for years and did not leave. So now fast forward. We got not only, again, take out the Stephanie thing. Triple H has a career end, ending injury twice. Came back better than ever. Not only that, I, I hold him personally responsible for the rising of making these storylines more realistic. Remember when uh, Stone Cold got hit by the car? That was the first time we had really saw like, oh shit, like bro, like yo, that it really go down backstage. Like yo, it really is like, like how Austin say, DTA, don't trust anybody. Yeah. You didn't really see that. It was like, it was more gimmicky before like you started seeing it from the AAA side. Like you saw it with Taker, like the whole kidnapping, the cult and stuff, but it was still like, okay, we get it. It's because we're here. When you saw that and then it's like Austin's out with an injury, you like, it muddled that line of like, yo, like, did y'all really like do like this? That, man, huh? Yeah, like you wasn't like you wasn't really like you didn't really know. And yeah. that wasn't until AAA started really having these storylines. And then like, let's fast forward, 14 time champion. Other thing, responsible for Randy Orton, Dave Batista, Evolution, yep. DX, China, getting Shawn Michaels back to where he was supposed to be. Yep. NXT, Ric Flair. Ric Flair was down and out swirling the fucking wrestling gutter, not being treated like the 16 time champion as he should be. Yeah, Triple H yeah. found this man, polished him back off, and reprised him. Man. Like, I really will say, had it not been for him, we would not have the Ric Flair we have right now, and we he would not still be made like he would not be the trending person he is outside of the wrestling culture. Had it not been for Triple H being such a fan of this person, having so much care for this person, to risk his career to bring him back. Yep. Find me any wrestler that topped all those things, and then you can tell me Triple H don't deserve it. I'm going to go ahead and say this right now because obviously the idea of I don't I don't know if anyone I don't know if gonna pick Hogan. I'm just gonna go into that now. I don't know if anyone's gonna pick Hogan. But the idea that Triple H would in a sense I, I feel like he did learn this from Vince McMahon himself. For the simple fact that Vince, like we, we mean, me and of course my brother talk about it all the time. Vince, when it comes to business, Vince is gonna do whatever it takes. Mm -hmm. The whole Eric Bischoff situation that alone showed you how much he doesn't even if it makes if it makes dollars, it makes sense to Vince. And that's all it is. It's always gonna be a business. He doesn't take shit personal. You know what I mean? Never takes it shit personal. So the idea, but so the idea that Hogan, how 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 selfish. Hogan was when he was on top and how he had to be on top 
and how we've seen what he did at WCW and heard the stories and how he buried people. But the idea that Hunter knew that bringing back Ric Flair, the legend, in order to even put himself on a higher level, in order to yeah. even use Ric Flair to even get himself even higher. Like, bro, you can't... He learned that from Vince. There's no way he didn't pick that up from Vince. Oh, so. yeah. And then, he didn't, and then, too, he didn't leave. And that, and that was the thing about, like... I don't even I don't I don't consider really Hogan top five anymore because of the fact that like yo don't get me wrong like you're a pillar in this and I give you that but the fact is bro like you left at a time when the company was going down like the company was in a rough spot and then you ran to the competition though you had probably one of the best heel turns of all time you see what happened to the company you see what didn't happen to you so just imagine what could have happened if you stayed yep yeah Imagine where you'd be now. Like, don't get me wrong, you're a legend, you're an icon, but you know, we see like how that how that career is continuing to be tainted and stuff like that. Imagine where you'd be had you not left. We see what what happened with Triple H when the going get tough and you still stick to your guns. Yeah, and we see it's, what happened. Uh, with- you know what I appreciate the most? Like this wrestling thing is so much more than just entertainment. I think for people like me, you, and, and Kadeem, well. Like we see the life lessons in it, and that's fine that people don't see it. And that's 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 great. That, that I think it's a select few who can pick up on these things. Right. And with Hunter specifically, though, you know what I admire so much that he's been around for eras, right? Yeah. All the personalities that he's had to come across when he was the star in front of the camera, and having to transition slowly but surely into the back of the camera, and then having to recruit new people and keep the older generation happy and keep the newer generation uh, uh, coming in. That is something I appreciate so much because I'm like, I, he has to have a level of, 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 um, you, he has to be able to- Self-awareness. Huh? Self-awareness, Self- I think. Just- Self-awareness. He knows who he is. We all know who he is, but yeah. he know, when you bring up the Ric Flair thing specifically, this is the legend, Ric Flair. And he imagine how he has to talk to Ric Flair to kind of rein him in so that he can get a job done and not be woo woo Ric Flair at all times. Oh, like, oh just, but just to cap on that too, bro. Of understanding to bring someone down to hey, Flair, need you right here, right now. Randy too. Though. Gonna listen. But go ahead. Randy too. Say, like, just to add to what you say, Randy too, and his yeah. idea. Yep. Yeah, I just add to what you were saying though, but no, please continue, bro. No, that's that's just what I, I I admire it so much. And there's moments like that when when I think of it, it's like yo, we come across a lot of crazy personalities in our industry and in our business. But to do what they do, like he's a boss. He's a he became a boss in this business. The is, game is, is literally in the game's hands. CFO. Huh? CFO. CFO. He's COO, and then Stephanie is CFO. That's what okay. it is. That's yeah. What it is. yeah. He's COO. Steph is CFO. Okay. And she just got named sure. number two uh, most powerful woman in the world in the Forbes joint recently, which congratulations to her, shout out to Stephanie. So it's just something that it's worth looking at, admiring, and figuring out how can you adapt? Because we don't, I don't know, I've never met the guy, but I can only assume that you have to have a level of, like Kadeem said, self-awareness and how you strategically talk to people to be able to get whatever this vision you have in mind to become your reality. And it's yeah. worth admiring for someone like Triple H, bro. Like even from the outside looking in, it's worth admiring. Shout out to Hunter, bro. He's and on me. He's, to... he's on there for me. Oh yeah, and just to piggyback what you said before before we move on, just to, uh, as you said, like adapt uh, adapted throughout the years, just like how we said, like how we you know we always highlight with you, and like how you've moved throughout your career, uh, Cleo. It's the same thing with him and his wrestling. Like not even just from the moves on the backstage, wrestling wise, he's gone through the attitude era, the new aggression era. The gold, the, the uh, reality era, and then now, uh, you know, well, the before the reality era, but the one before that one, like um, all of these. So he's had to adapt even his wrestling style from the, you know, the 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 old school wrestling style to the hardcore matches, like tossing fucking Mick Foley through a hell in a cell, going on to thumbtacks. He's had to become like the technical strategic wrestler, the brawler, like every time, like whatever was hot, Triple H adapted to and wound up somehow making it through the main event. And it wasn't just cause of Stephanie. And so that's the thing I think really too, like I think a lot of people will always try to throw at him, but I'm like, yo, to be honest with you, 
Stephanie is probably number four or five on the things you can highlight for him as to why his career is where it's at. Him marrying the boss's daughter really was just, it's already like having an A plus on the cake. extra credit. Yeah, it's like, it's oh, here's your extra 10 points. Now you got 110 on your score. Like, yeah. I, I would say that. I, I, there again, I would say this. If he was, if he was as, we would have figured it out pretty quick. If he was not, good, even if he did marry Stephanie, let's just go in. Like I said, let's separate it. I told you that's why I said start with my thing. Separate that and then look at what Hunter is and what Hunter has done. Separate Stephanie because if he was a terrible wrestler, if he was not good at wrestling, he wasn't good with his mic and his actual playing up a story and bring and actually being able to do it. No, we wouldn't have cared. Nope. Would have been like, we, then we for sure would have would have called it out. Like, oh yeah, Stephanie is really holding this man down. But we honestly, look, if you look from the outside looking in, that's not what this is. It's never been that. When the man first started, when the man first started, that's what made me have respect for him. He had said, uh, Vince gave him a three year contract. No, 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 no. I think it was uh, Eric Bischoff because he was in WCW uh, before. He was like, Eric was like. Uh, no, no, uh, Dusty Rose was like, we'll give you a three-year contract to be able to uh, be in here and show us what you could do. He said, no, give me a one-year contract. He said, if I can't prove to you in one year that I'm supposed to be here, I ain't supposed to be here. Yeah. Makes that sense. Time, and, and 25 years later, where is he at? Consistency. I was talking about it a little bit earlier. Consistency, man. That's crazy that he's able to still be that relevant. But we can continue on. We got What we got right. next? Who? So, so we got three. So there's two left. Two slots left on this Mount Rushmore. Man. I get this mine right now. Go ahead. What you got, Cleo? John Cena. Damn it. Cena. That's, that's Cena. mine. It's Come Cena, on. bro. We could, you know, I, I get the people want to hate him because he's the he's for the kids. He's a superhero. But nope. he's so much more. <laughs> He He's it. so bulletproof on that microphone. We 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 hadn't seen a bulletproof like that like since Rock. And then we have a punk in there, kind of not not even kind of punk is up there microphone skill wise. But Cena is so good, bro, at controlling everything when that camera is on. Every aspect of it, how the match goes, calling the spots. Talking to the crowd, talking to the referee, and involving the uh, the commentators, playing up, getting beaten down when he's, I mean, he's always been the face, so he's never had the heel turn. But, like, all of it, all of it. So, Cena, for sure, he's on my Rushmore, dog. Yeah, man. I don't, um, I can't, I can't knock it, bro. Like, nope. you, don't, you don't get the moniker Big Match John. For no reason. And I've said it before, like when you know, when it comes to like referencing the NBA finals, like it's a different thing when you at the big show. It's a difference when you the main event, when you gotta finish off the show, when you gotta close, when you gotta be when you're the last thing people are gonna leave the arena seeing. That's a lot of weight on your shoulders, especially and especially if you're working with someone who has never been in it who don't appreciate that or who is stubborn and don't want to listen, that's a lot to handle. But not only that, accolades wise, like, come on. We only have one person that's a 16 time. This dude, the only, only, only one who's enough is what? John Cena, 15. Yep. Anytime he comes back, whether you love him or you hate him, you something. So that's something. Polarizing, baby. The right. first polarizing superstar in the WWE to me because everything we're still playing about old school rules in the attitude era but he was the first polarizing athlete where you would hear nothing but booze in the arena but his merch selling like crazy and he's been the top guy for freaking eight years plus super Love Cena it. super, super Cena, Cena bro. No, I, I like I like calling him super Cena because the idea of course the matches of him getting his ass whooped and then all of a sudden that five move of death come by, and then he right back in the match, and he gonna finish you off. Good old soup. Or how many times he's kicked out? I don't remember. John Cena has kicked out of a lot of shit in his matches. Yes. He been getting destroyed, technically in the whole grand scheme of things. And he will get up almost all the time. Good old Super Cena. So, yeah, no, he thought he for sure number four for me as well, man. It's it's oh, yeah. you can't you can't knock it. You can't knock right. Cena 
as I'm, much like I, I you know I, I grew a lot of respect when he fought Sabu as well. If, yeah. if you've seen the Sabu fight, That's when the whole when the whole ECW versus WWE thing happened, he went and fought Sabu. I was just like, all right, John, this is this RV, is this RVD too. RVD fights were good too, bro. No, no, but like think, bro, to take your the prestigious WWE title. And hand it over to Rob Van Dam. In his spot, in his home. In Philly. But then not only that, though, your rival costs you that. Yep. That's a that that's a lot. And I think that's Amazing a lot. Amazing booking. Yeah, that's a lot of credit he don't get for. And I, and I said this, and a lot of people don't agree with it, but it's like if you think about it, it's true. He is the perfected version of Hulk Hogan. Yep. Yep. But Hulk Hogan was. Uh, that's a hundred percent fact. Who the hell doesn't agree with that? Yep. Because people are like, no, nah, he's no Hogan. He's no this. I'm like, yo, Hogan Man, oh. had five moves. Yep. Hogan, Hogan was great with the crowd. Hogan had a great brand. Had a great mic skill. John Cena just. And, and don't forget, sold to the kids just as much. Sold to the kids. Hulk, Hulk, Hulk the Mania kids. was literally uh, was was very popular with obviously the kids at that time. Vitamins, all of that. You can't, can't say your prayers. Eat your vitamins, brother. Same, same thing. Hustle, hustle, loyalty, respect. It's the same, same brand. Yep. It just did. It just works better here because we got social media. It's easier for the kids. And yeah, you know. And and I don't want to hold him responsible for going from ruthless aggression to that era. I'm like, yo, that's not his fault. But eventually, you know, like kids are gonna want to get into. That's how I it started. It's a rotation. It yep. always happens like that. Golden era. Kids were the ones that were watching Hulk Hogan. That's why you had cartoons about them. Yep. Then it started getting into the teenagers. Then it got into the adults. It's the same cycle. It's just the started cycle. over. Yep. But yeah, I agree. John Cena has definitely seen his way into uh, my top five. I was also, I was also going to say this. I always make this joke with my brother and I say, if Vince had another daughter... John Cena would have married her, yep. and he would have been just where Triple H is right now. Facts. That's that's how much he was in with it. That's how much John is given to the actual industry, the WWE. Industry. That's how that's how much he was fed into that the whole industry. He would have married yeah. that second daughter. Oh hell yeah! Yeah, John would have yeah. did. John would have did. Yeah. So uh, I get. I, dang, this uh, this is crazy that this is a four way agreement. So we only got one more slot. Damn it. This is going to be the dangerous one. Yeah, this is going to be the dangerous one. Because I can already tell you right now, I don't think it's Shawn Michaels. Yeah, I don't think it is. If, I, again, I love, Shawn Michaels is my, if you ask me who my favorite wrestler is, I'm going to say Shawn Michaels. Nine times out of ten, I'm going to say Shawn, just because of what he was able to do in the ring. And Again, if he didn't get injured, if his back didn't go out, and of course the whole drug problem, we don't know where Sean would have went. Sean, Sean yeah. was incredible. He was amazing. But obviously because of that and, you know, obviously the hi- the hiatus, him coming back, there's just a lot of times that we lost Sean. He wasn't able to fight Stone Cold. He wasn't able to fight The Rock again, which the whole Rock situation was for another reason, but I'm not going yeah. to mm, yeah, I'm not going not gonna to bring that one up. Oh, no, it's fine. I'm going to that, leave that one alone. But that's the reason why Sean was not able to, you know, be, make this list for me, unfortunately. Man, I got one, but y'all ain't gonna like it. So I'm, I'm gonna hold off real quick. I ain't gonna say it was my first nomination. I'm, I'm gonna say, my, well, you know what? I would uh, let me let me rethink mine because I would have said this if this man stopped a few years ago. I would have said it. Who? I would have said Taker if he did stopped four years ago. I would have I would have gave it to him. I'm gonna be honest with you. Mm. You take away the stopping if he stopped where he's at. Nigga, he ain't no different than Kane. I'm gonna just be 100 with you. Like, don't nobody be real. Like, it's always dope to see Taker there, but it's just it's just the same thing with Kane, bro. Like, I'm glad he put in the years. He has been a great character icon. But there are a lot of people that are just like that. Like, I I to this day, like the only thing you like you you are known for a lot of stuff, but to go on your top five, I can't. Yeah. But you got hell of a respect. You in my top ten, but you probably like number six or seven. Yeah, I mean it's just the consistency. It's just being around. But the thing is, he's around for too long now. Now, now it's too much. 
Yeah. Now, now he's doing damage to his. I think did he finally retire officially? He said he didn't. So he didn't retire. He mm. just said I've done every. There's no reason for me to come back. Okay. I until there, I, until there until there is a time. Okay, that's is. fine. Yeah. But Go he's ahead. like now there's no. I have no reason to come back. There's nobody I can think of that I'd want to face. Basically, was what he okay. was getting. Okay. So yeah, Taker would have made my list for sure if he would have stopped. Um. Ooh, man. This is a tough one. Who you got over there, Cleo? This is hard. This is hard. hard I know my This is hard, man, because I've appre- I appreciate Shawn Michaels so much for his in-ring ability. Like He's the uh, he's literally the only one who I watch and I and I wonder if he's really like hurt. He's the only one, yeah. right? The only one. But not the only cell, that, how, cell games on stop. It's he's so smooth in the ring, Will. It's so smooth. It's one two bounce off the ropes. One two. It's so smooth. Orton, same thing for me. Same thing. He's right in there. He's just, he might be one of the most smoothest in the rings of all time. Um, I I mean again I don't remember much of Randy or- Orton's matches. That's my only thing. I, I, of course he's he's obviously picked up the whole with the RKO out of nowhere thing is picked up a mind of its own. Yeah, man. man let me just just go ahead and say it, man. Go ahead and say go it. Edge. Edge. I was gonna say. Edge. I was gonna Edge. say number Edge. fucking five on this out rest floor. I was gonna say. Bro, come on, yo. Edge is like, yo, you don't get the name the ultimate opportunist for nothing. Bro, right to go from probably hands down one of the greatest tag teams, still to this day being a part of one of the greatest wrestling moments, spearing Jeff Hardy off of a fucking title held suspended in the air, to Ow. going r-rated superstar to basically having a jerry springer moment in real life be put into your storyline can't can't wait for that to become actually a live action can't wait for, can't wait for them to do it can't wait bro, you you popularize the money in the bank shit because of how many times you've won every time people like you fought against the absolute best Every WrestleMania moment with him versus The Undertaker when they were in Orlando, Hell in a Cell match. When he had to face John Cena. When he speared fucking Mick Foley through a table set on fire at WrestleMania in what? Uh, Detroit, in the Motor City. Edge has, has went from this guy that was just a regular tag team person to this pinnacle. And the fact that he had to retire and the fact that the year after he went in the Hall of Fame, it wasn't because of the retirement. It's because of the staple you made coming yeah. in. Rated RKO. Like his like his intercontinental runs, his European runs. Yep. Like all the way through the Attitude Era. Like, bro, like Edge showed not only can I be a tag team person, but you didn't think I could do singles competition. And I did that. You Killed didn't that think, shit too. Yeah, you didn't think I could be a main eventer and carry a world heavyweight title, and I did that. You didn't think I could stand up against the big boys and not only do that, but give them a run for their money. I did that. I made John Cena do a TLC match where he had to throw me off the top of a ladder to win. I did everything you thought I couldn't do, and I exceeded it to where even when your music plays, on this day, I see you can't help but sing the next line. No, he up there. It, but if so you ask somebody t- better, let me know. So, I'm so not, y'all two, y'all two, y'all two going with, with that fifth spot for Edge, right? Not so just I, yet. I want to hear more names, but before I say, I don't one. have because it, it's hard. Well, it's so hard to round off that five, bro. It's so hard. Like, where are you pulling from? Really, I don't know. I, I, I don't have, have mine. I have my. I, I have. I have another name to bring to the table, you at least. Who you got? Kurt Angle. Kurt Angle. Oh, wow. That was gonna be my other one too. Kurt that Angle. Was gonna be my other one too. Kurt, I have seen so many matches of Kurt Angles that I remember vividly. I yeah. remember Kurt Angle's matches so vividly. 
for the way he the way he came in, the way he was a, kind of the baby face of working for Vince when he had hair and everything like that, and then he made that turn and turned into an app an absolute dick and talking shit while wrestling. I loved Kurt Angle. <laughs> Kurt Angle and the man can wrestle. Obviously, he's a gold medalist. Let's go ahead and get that out the way. But his move set and everything else. He won a gold else, medal with a what? He won a gold with a medal with a what? Freaking neck. broken neck. So, Kurt Angle is who I'm bringing to the table for my number five. It's going to be see, very It's hard for me to get off Kurt Angle, bro. And see, here's the only thing that I feel like kind of messed Kurt Angle up. Mm. Is his crash and burn when he left. He didn't leave at the wrong time. Hey, you, hey, you know what's so messed up about it, though? His TNA run wasn't bad. But it's TNA. Yeah. But it's TNA. TNA and Impact is like, yeah. Yeah, still, they're, they're like, like, even right now, like, for instance, Drew McIntyre is currently the WWE champion. Yet, I don't count nothing from Impact. I'm like, McIntyre 3MB took a break. NXT came back stunting, yeah. holding it down. You third to be champ right now. Yeah. The impact shit. I'm like, I can't, I can't, I don't know why. For some reason, I just cannot equate that to somebody's career. Like even AJ Styles, Japan, Ring of Honor, all the other stuff. Impact TNA. Yeah, yeah. that's that's it's what, just that's something the about the E, man. Like it's you could, it's great for the for the culture of wrestling to have so many different uh, companies out there where you can show off, you know, your skills and your love for the business. And us as fans, we can't appreciate it. But it's just something about that WWE stamp. They all dream to get the year, man. They all dream to be underneath that flag and meet Vince and, and really have that, that moment at a WrestleMania because that's what the biggest of the biggest is. is no yeah. knock to New Japan for having, you know, their own wrestle uh, you know, super super show over there when they when they go off like when Shinsuke and AJ killed that shit years ago. Yeah, dope. But it's just something about that brand, dog, and you just can't knock it. You want that stamp, and uh, they've 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 all gone and come and come back. And AJ is a top guy. AJ really is a top dude, bro. Yeah. What did he, they say? He spent like what sixty percent of his career as a champion in WWE. Like that's like the staple he's gone. But it's like, but you've now noticed though that they they structured it a lot better as to where this stands. Like like you said, bro, WWE is the is <laughs> wanting to take this from WCW, where the big boys play. Like, that, that is the NBA. Like that's the mainstream. Like if you want to be a multi million dollar wrestler, if you want to be known throughout the world for your career, that's where you go. If you wanna if you wanna be someone that loves the purity of wrestling and fight the actual wrestling form, you go to IDW, I mean IWGP, you go to Japan, because that's where you see wrestlers. That's where it's like, yo, it is literally about to come down to who's gonna knock off their last move and get it out, because they beat each other down till they can't go no more. And then you have these subdivisions like like TNA. TNA is just it's like WWE, but it's like, yo, it's it's that those few missing factors that don't make you them. Same thing with AEW right now. AEW has a very great start off. They, 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 their uh, branding is wonderful, but it's just certain key elements that you're missing that WWE got that you don't. And that's why it keeps them number one in the main. And then that's why you have these other subsidiaries like Ring of Honor, like TNA. Like, uh, 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 I always forget the uh, NWP, I believe, uh, and stuff like that. I'm sorry if I got the name wrong, but right. it's just those key little elements. So, but, I mean, go ahead. NXT, 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 <laughs> NXT, NXT fire. But I, NXT I, was gonna say, fire. I was gonna say, I mean, I just actually saw, speaking of AEW, I just saw Cody Rhodes. He's gonna be on some show with Snoop Dogg. I mean, it's obvious, it's on, it's on TBS or TNT. Yeah. One, one of the Turners, obviously, one of the Turner shows. Uh, but it's AEW, um, AEW, uh, it said AEW's Cody. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that's how he brand, wanted to brand his name. You know, they said Snoop Dogg, um, somebody else from Impractical Jokers, AEW's Cody. It didn't even say well, Cody you know Rhodes. Well, well, you know he can't use Cody Rhodes. You know that, Why not? right? They, WWE, WWE won't, give, won't give him the right, so he can't use Cody Rhodes. He has to go by Cody, and he didn't want to use his real name. Uh, which is Cody Runnels, I believe. Yeah, so he can't yeah, use but, Rhodes. Yeah, but that's my dad. Like, 
But my dad, though, is Dusty Rhodes, right? Like, that's that's, well, that's not right? his name. That's not their name. Their real name is Reynolds. Just I like get Rick it. Is Richard Fleer. I but get they it. But own, the, that's the thing. They own that name. That is bull. That's bull. And, oh, believe me. He tried, he's been fighting to try to get it back. He's even gone on Twitter to say, like, yo, like, they won't give me the right to our name, our legacy that we built. That's why they still got the Dusty Rhodes Classic. Because they own the, the name Rhodes. Wow. I didn't even that's know. Why, that's why Gold Dust don't go by his name no more. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, man. That but is, I mean, that, that's this business. That is. You know what I'm saying? Like, you that's, knew what it was. That's crazy. All I know is that I'm still leaving my man Kurt, Kurt Angle up there. Kurt Angle. We got Kurt Angle. We got Edge. And Kurt Angle, we got Edge. I Who reserve my fifth. I don't have a fifth. You have a fifth. You, no, 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 no. I, don't no, have no. A fifth. I don't have a fifth. Will, I got nothing to tell you, bro. I don't have a okay, fifth. Well, we go, but this this slot gonna get filled. That's what she said. Uh, we don't we don't leave straight out of a comic book unfilled. So I guess that means it's between Kurt Angle and Ed. Then I'm going. If I had to choose between those two, I gotta go Kurt Angle. Uh, I was there. I was at WrestleMania when he had his um, uh, when he was inducted into the Hall of Fame. I was there that year in Orlando and having that moment to be in the arena on Raw the next night and getting a chance to do the you suck along with the song, man. And yeah, and Edge did that to Angle. Let's not forget that. Edge punk ass made that a part of Angle's song. That sucks. He did that. And I'm that. like, that's hey, why you good. gotta give it to Edge. No, when it comes to heels, when it comes to heels of our era of like from being kids to now, Edge is up there. It's Edge, it's Hunter. Um, hey, you know what? I know exactly who my top five, who my fifth is. You know who it is, Will? Mm. Chris Jericho. Oh my Chris God. Chris Jericho's my five. You wanna know why? Cause he has the best debut and the best intro song of yeah, everybody. I wouldn't say debut, but intro. Best, yeah. what? Best debut. No, best actually, build up. That was two, oh, no, no. Best, best build up. Worst disappointment ever. It was like Star Wars, the new series when it dropped. All that hype for a mediocre film. I was like, all this hype for a mediocre wrestler. But I do not disagree that he should that he should be in this discussion on Mount Rushmore. Thank you, that man has done a lot. Yes, he I has. Was, I was gonna say the. Um... I was gonna say apparently ta apparently Taz is in, uh debut is probably might be better. Taz, I, I remember when Taz came to WWE. Yeah, have you I, ever seen that debut? I, I, hey, that, hey, that's I mean, I, my, of course, I'm, obviously Taz is Taz is Taz. I mean, I don't really know much about him on the ECW. Oh, no, he was amazing on ECW. He was he was he was it, there. It, going. He's good, but it, it, it's just, it's just the same thing like everybody else. Like yeah. his, it, it was more this this dude was a fighter. And yeah. so it was like, you know, like, it's not like on the WWE superstar type shit. Like, I'm a fighter. Let me get my money. Make sure my stuff good. I'm ready to go. Like, that was kind of like yeah. Taz's. You yeah, can tell Star wasn't really on his mindset yeah. coming. Yeah, but I remember seeing that that intro. I actually saw that video. I think I seen the interview with Taz talking about it and how that actually scared a lot of people in the E. Like, uh-oh. So. Bro, because it was like, yo, nigga, I would not want to get put in a chokehold by you. Like, yeah. you really look like you're going to make me... Yep, yeah, the, there's the whole, his whole demeanor and everything like that. Apparently, Taz wrote people yeah. the wrong way. But yeah, that's all I'm gonna say is this: his intro, his, his, his debut, his debut is on the level of Jericho. I was, I was, I was, I was gonna get out there, but mm. I don't think Jericho makes that list. I gotta be honest. He's up for discussion. He's top ten. I don't think I, first of all, I it's my go. first of all, it's my Mount Rushmore. He's up there with with the braided beard too, with the braided beard. <laughs> I'd rather, red, that, I'd rather that than what he got now. And the red and the red uh, highlights at the bottom of his blonde hair. Not that, the red Jericho. streaks. Not the red this? streaks. You don't want yeah, no, give me that one. Give me that the, one. The perfect Jericho. You don't want them too. Give me that one. The, uh, when they finally had the invasion build up and finally getting to pay off, and it was the w, w, uh, WCW versus WWF. Like how Jericho came out that day. That's the Jericho I'm talking about. I want that Jericho, the one that Will's doing with his hair. I want that's the Jericho that I remember. No, I want this Jericho. You don't, you don't want this Jericho. <laughs> Pineapple head ass. That is, that is how he debuted. So how would it go? Oh my Would you goodness. please shut the hell up? He had a bunch of little things. He had I shut the hell up. I forgot to pick you, idiot. 
Winnipeg, you had it. He called ass clowns the list. He reinvented himself every time. He did. Jerrica Holics. <laughs> It's your man. It's your man. I, I, and also, and Don't also, act so, like the walls and the lion's salt ain't crazy. No, if he had the code breaker back in the day, oh, he's absolutely top five. If he, he had code bre- he had it. I don't know why he got rid of it. No, but if he had code breaker by the time he won the the two, uh, when he was undisputed, uh, if he was pulling off code code breakers. Oh, he was absolutely top five. He would have been top five easy. Facts. If he if he had code breaker at that time, he never used. He didn't have it at that time. He had lion salts and walls. That's all he had. So. I think I'm gonna go with Edge, man. I think I'm gonna I have to go with with, uh, with Edge on it. Uh, but I I do I would definitely uh, respect the talk of Chris Jericho being on Mount Rushmore just for the fact that he is like just like to compare like him to an Undertaker. We want Undertaker to kind of stop. It's like, bro, you've done more than enough. Like you don't have to keep doing this. Jericho does it and it stays consistent. Like when yeah. he went to Japan, I was not mad that he became Intercontinental Champ. I was like, okay, Jericho, I see you. Yep. Okay. Then he goes to AEW and you're made the head champ. And not only that though, you you're it makes sense and you're carrying it. You're helping build other people up. You're really like giving these folks a chance and stuff like that. So you know, I still I still have my I still have my opinion about him and stuff like that, but I never takes away from the respect of what he has done. Still okay. think though you're in the B class. It's just gonna I'll, be my thought. I think I think we have to throw a name out there before we get out of here before we're done. Um okay. Brock Lesnar? We're just not gonna talk about Brock. I mean so listen, this is I, I don't like Brock straight out of the comic <laughs> book. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. So much for joining us. Uh, we gotta talk about Brock. Why would we talk about Brock? Let's talk. If that's the case, we need to talk about the hurricane because he deserves to be on my Okay, we out of here then. If you were doing this, I'm. I'm Dane Helms, you you didn't stay in the back because there was a hurricane coming through. Let's Are talk about sexual chocolate, not the world's strongest man. Sexual chocolate. How it's, about how about the how about the world's biggest love machine, Viscera? How about how about Viscera? Man, shout out Viscera, bro. All right, people. <laughs> All right, people. A lot of reaching going on here. You niggas should be stretching. What? So we just not gonna talk about the boogeyman and the the impact that he made on this industry. Hey, Goodbye. boogie slam was fire. I don't give a damn what anyone says. The boogie, boogie slam, slam was fire. Give me that. Boom. Hey, that well, was I a like fire ass slam. move. I was like, I wish someone else had this. Yeah, <laughs> like, boogie slam. That was a dope ass move. All right. I, We're not gonna I, talk about Sky too hot, you know? Hey, no bullshit. I wish Samoa Joe got a real run, man. Samoa Joe's my only guy that I wish really could get a real run in the E. He does great commentary now, but they they tease the KO versus uh, Samoa Joe match at NXT, and we never got it. And it still bothers me. I want that. Honest, I was going to say, I, that's probably one of my biggest disappointments they did with KO. Yeah. Oh, him, yeah. Him, him, him and, honestly, him and Bray Wyatt are in the same boat to me. I'm just like, oh, so much potential gone, squandered. Well, you know, but you know why they're doing that, though. That's Vince. Yeah, Vince don't like them because they fat. Yeah, I guess I don't know. I don't no, 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 no. That was the exact. Like he literally told him, and he was like, "Yo, bro, like if you don't lose weight, I'm not, I'm not gonna book you as a main eventer." So like mm-hmm. he had dropped the weight, but then he picked it back up, and like you see where he's at. And it's just like, but you get like look at like like Rich, and if you think I'm not, look at Keith Lee. Notice how they covered Keith Lee up when he came mm-hmm. in Raw. Mm-hmm. Yep. Vince don't want fat people as his champions. He don't want them as main eventers. If you're going to do it, cover yourself up. Same thing with Bray. He made him cover Bray up. I don't know. So. All I know is KO's... KO had a cannonball, didn't he? The running mm-hmm. cannonball? Yeah, yep. that... Man, KO had some crazy-ass moves coming out. No, That's KO's all I move repertoire <laughs> is crazy. Dude. When KO came... The, the, KO debuted on, on, on Raw... Walked down to John Cena, told him, you don't get to tell me how to do this. As a matter of fact, boom, pop a powerbomb, boom. Then they go into the pay-per-view match, and KO won. won. He won. We were running around the house. I couldn't believe it. I was like, yo, John Cena just let KO come up from NXT and win? Crazy match. Crazy match. That's what I'm saying. So starting from there to where he is now, it's just like, yo. You, you run what you running an opening matches with Aleister Black? That's what you're doing? Well, that's what we doing out here now, KO? You were uh, we, we were gonna talk. He had a rocket strapped to his back. 
They put a rocket wow. on his back. They had like what, almost every championship except what the WWE championship. Yeah, they put a rocket strap to that man's back, and you oh. see where he is now. That's it, it is what it is. We, we're, but you know what though, I can't say this. The same thing happened to Sheamus, and then Sheamus somehow get that magic spark, have his run, and then that's it. And then he back where he is. So at least Kev is still in the picture though. Like he's still because he was in this uh, WrestleMania again. So. Yep. You know he's maintaining, like you said, it's just gonna be one of them times where it's like when it's time for him to be called up, he'll be he'll be called up, and it seems like he'll be ready to go. Yeah, good old Seamus. But yeah, so uh, but this has been another episode of Straight Out of a Comic Book. I believe we have our Mount uh, Mount Rushmores. Most of ours were the same with The Rock, Stone Cold, uh, John Cena, and Triple H. Uh, varying out both of our all three of our Mount Rushmores. Just that fifth spot was a little different. Cleo was going is going with Chris Jericho. Kadeem is going with Kurt Angle, and I am going with Edge. Let us know what your Mount Rushmore is in the wrestling business. Who are you putting as your top five? We know it's four people on Mount Rushmore. We just made it into five before you start commenting in the comments. It's only four people on Mount Rushmore. We know. We know. So, thank you so much for joining us. Make sure that you uh, like, subscribe, follow, and turn on your notifications for here on my YouTube and on my Twitch.tv slash Will Farrell. Will Farrell, everything on the social medias as well. Same thing for these two, the Thomas brothers, who I like to thank so much for taking y'all time for being here, talking wrestling with me. This was so much fun. Make sure you follow their Twitches, twitch.tv slash Cleo Thomas. Probably one of the best streams out there. Not just saying hey. that he's my friend, but believe me, these people have an amazing time there. As well as Kadeem on the morning tip. You want to know technical stuff. You want nostalgic kind of games. Games you've never even heard of that you are going to turn into your absolute favorites. This is the guy to see. Twitch.tv slash Thaddeus. Turn on those notifications so y'all know when these folks are streaming so you can go watch it. Follow them across their social medias. And as always, stay safe, stay great, and we will catch you next time.